Hello, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. I'm Abira Ahmed and I'm joined here today with Mr. Yarith, who is the program manager at the Polio program in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us today. So, Nigeria once used to be the global epicenter for polio. Virus from Nigeria spread everywhere around the world. However, cut to the present, no wild polio virus has been detected since 2016, and Africa region on the whole is now eligible for a certification of wild polio virus eradication. This will be a tremendous achievement. How was this done? Yes, indeed. Uh it's almost uh, a huge achievement. We are very excited to have reached to such a very important milestone. But definitely it is the culmination of several years of over 30 years of investment. But uh, I would say that 2011 and 2012 were uh, a, a, an important turning point for the program in Nigeria. Uh, following the resurgence of the virus, the country introduced a number of innovations with the support from uh, local and international partners. Uh, putting all heads together and several innovations were introduced that really uh, uh, made a difference in, 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 in uh, really uh, the eradication efforts. And for me, the main important uh, innovation that we have done there is the introduction of what we call a National Emergency Operation Center, which has really brought government to assume its uh, rightful ownership and leadership responsibilities. WHO is part and parcel of the, uh, uh, the program uh, as a partner for government, providing strategic uh, guidance uh, for the program, plays a very pivotal role in the EOC. Uh, we, 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 we have a role for, uh, we, we, there are different working groups within the EOC, one of which, for instance, is a strategic uh, committee, which WHO leads. But UNICEF also plays a very important role, uh, mainly in the area of logistics management and communication and uh, traditionally the community leaders engagement. And then Rotary also plays a lot of role in the advocacy. So all these important components being brought together and coordinated at the EOC level is, I think, one of the most important innovations. Could you please elucidate specifically about Nigeria? What sort of numbers are we talking about? Yeah, I think the eradication efforts is very much a labor-intensive activity, and numbers matter a great deal. First of all, Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, uh, with over 180 million people. The, it's also a population of young uh, people. Uh, even if we take the target population for polio eradication, which is the age of under five, we have about 50 million target population that we have to cover in one national round which translates simply in saying that the equivalent number of doses have to be administered when we are conducting a national campaign. So, in addition to that one, I mean, because it's a house-to-house -house strategy, and in addition to the fixed post and the special team that we deploy during campaigns, you have about 14 levels of vaccination personnel that are engaged to support the activity. In one national round, for example, we have to engage up to 400,000 vaccination personnel uh, uh, nationwide and in subnational rounds on average covering about you know what we call 11 high-risk states close to 200,000 or 178,000 to be exact uh, vaccination personnel will have to be engaged in terms of financial resources also it's a program in a typical year uh, between uh, I mean the resources that are just ch being channeled through the global partners WHO and UNICEF mainly is on average between 100 to 150 million dollars uh, per year. In your opinion, do you think Nigeria is free of wild polio virus? And I'm also talking about access restricted areas like the Borno state. If the virus was there, it would have showed up by now because of the several innovative strategies that we have introduced. Our surveillance is certificate level, but there are always rooms for improvement. It gets better and better with the use of technology such as AVADA, e-surveillance, and as I have also mentioned, it's not only for the, uh, we are also using the, every opportunity available to really expand the surveillance network in the security compromised areas. It's also highly complemented by the environmental surveillance, which is uh, being expanded from time to time. And as one of the special intervention security compromised areas, uh, we are not only co uh, dependent on the normal uh, SIS schedule, we also conduct special interventions, particularly targeting the transition points because there is a very huge movement of population um, along the international borders. 
And so we, we deploy a transit teams that just cover those areas. We also deploy teams that go and attend to uh, eligible uh, target population in markets. Uh, and also whenever the opportunity uh, avails itself, we also deploy rapid teams for a kind of hit and run strategy for them to go in, administer vaccines and come back you know, when the security situation uh, deteriorates. Okay, so we're all in agreement that now is not the time to take our foot off the accelerator. The CBDBVs also need to be addressed. What more needs to happen? Looking towards the future, what is the country's strategy? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think it's a very important question you are asking me. Because uh, the CVDPV is a reminder that the country is not really ready to have a sustainable uh, mechanism to safeguard the gains of all these huge investments that have been put in the polio eradication. The CVDPV is a manifestation of low immunity. It's a manifestation of low routine immunization system that we have in that country. The country is now developing what we call a, a, a polio business transition plan. And WHO as uh, prescribed in the global strategy for transition is also working a, an agency specific detailed business case plan which is aligned with the national uh, transition plan. In that plan what we have clearly articulated is that in as uh, part of the government priorities for strengthening of the uh, routine immunization, the disease surveillance and outbreak response which includes the VPD surveillance, polio included of course, and also the primary health care uh, revitalization. These priorities have been identified. Polio strategy, which has been extended until 2023, has one of its pillars, has uh, integration as one of its pillars, which is very much important. Just to give you an example on the aspect of integration, to give you a specific example of what we went through in Nigeria, when there was an Ebola outbreak in the West Africa and Nigeria was also infected by that in 2014, it was the polio infrastructure that just came handy to respond to that uh, very, very frightening outbreak. Uh, in fact, most of the models and the tools and the innovations that were immediately put, uh, implemented for the uh, Ebola outbreak response were directly uh, replicated from the polio eradication, including the EOC, including the uh, disease uh, surveillance and outbreak response, and including putting the, uh, uh, managing the partnership, management of the resources, and deployment of the uh, field support, including the surge capacity, were all innovations that were already well articulated by the polio eradication. Uh, of course, routine immunization has also been running on the polio infrastructure for so long. The VPD surveillance, the, you know, Nigeria is an, an epidemic or emergency prone country. Uh, we experience, unfortunately, lots of uh, epidemics. And all these are being run on the polio eradication scheme. Thank you so much, Yarif, for taking our time and talking to us. And thank you so much for listening in to this edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Join us again next time to see who we bring on board. Thank you.